Um, can we start off by just um, you telling us your name and what you do or who you're with? Okay, awesome. Um, my name's Vivian Rolfe. I'm from the University of the West of England, which is in Bristol, in the UK. Um, I've been involved in open education um, for about 10 years. I'm a science teacher. I teach biomedical and medical sciences. So I've got a background in creating open educational resources and I carried that through to Bristol where I live now. Um, so you come at this uh, more from the faculty perspective, would you say? I, I think I do, <laughs> but I think um, I don't do so much teaching anymore, but I'm more interested in the, the wider picture. And in the UK, I'm more interested in now the, the, the policies and sort of influencing wider communities. Um, so obviously it's a great conference to come to because there's so much inspiring work that's already gone on where people have had those challenges and those battles. So you just come away sort of oozing with ideas and approaches. So it's a, it's, it's a great place to be, isn't it? The, the Open Ed Conference. Well, and anything particular that has sparked your um, been really interesting? I think the conference has been interesting this year. I think there is such a breadth of stuff going on. I think in previous years there's been maybe a focus on one approach um, or one year there was just lots of people evaluating and, and case studies about what they're doing. And there's such a breadth right from we're hearing about perspectives from library staff, uh, perspectives on really just cool and simple bits of technology to use um, right through to the the economics and the business models so I think I think it's 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 just been a, a, a thorough education for three days in, in terms of all the different facets of things that you can pick up but of course it's about the people as well and um, you, you meet just increasingly sort of more awesome people that you, you kind of met before but no, sorry, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? So, yeah, no, the conference is also about the people and connecting and uh, making new networks, which is what it's all about. Cool, cool. And I, I'm not talking, by the way, that's why I'm not talking. So okay. Oh, great. <laughs> um, uh, so, so why do you think open matters, I guess, uh, since we're talking about in the educational context mm. for students, faculty, and institutions? Why it matters, I... It's just such a fundamental thing, isn't it? Um, everyone should have a right to uh, getting the best advantages in life. And I've never seen open as, oh, this, this new thing we've got to do. It, it's just it's what makes me tick in a way. I just, it's always made perfect sense to me. So I, th I think where it's been really exciting is where it's sort of widened the opportunities for students and people can maybe learn a bit more flexibly if they're holding down part-time jobs. Um, you know, used to work with nursing students that were out on the ward, but st you still wanted access to materials. Just gives people more choice. So I think uh, I think it's vital for students. Um, I, I love the textbook idea. Um, you know, it it is about costs, isn't it? But it, it's it's more about just making things more accessible, also. So vital for students. I, I just can't see anyone involved in education any more working sort of behind closed doors. It, it's just so counterintuitive. Um, from a staff perspective, I think it's amazing. People, I think people start being terrified. Oh my God, I've got to find out about licenses and what technology to use. But I think for me, um, it's been one of the most powerful things that I've ever seen in terms of getting colleagues to think about their own practices and enhance what they're doing and learn about licenses. So I think it's amazing for staff development. I think every teacher um, in the world should develop an open educational resource. Um, I, I just think it, it, it's great in that respect. And for universities, institutions, well, they, I think sometimes they see it differently and I think uh, sometimes it's more of a reputational badge. Um, I think the further you sort of go up in, in seniority, op open changes quite dramatically in, in people's perceptions of it or what they think of it. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the business models behind it become more important. Um, and you, you kind of lose sight of the students, I think, the further you go up the chain. Um, so, yeah, it's really, really interesting um, area to, to be involved in. Great, thanks. Um, Can I just um, 
ask you to move that um, to the other side because I'm picking it up a little bit. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So you need to redo anything? No, it's okay. okay. It's not too bad, but. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, how can, you know, do, do you think the open sort of culture should increase at universities and do you even think it should be a default? Yeah, should open be a default? I mean, I personally do think so. I think, I think that's so challenging, though. I, th I think particularly in the UK at the moment where um, we, we're developing more of a competitive marketplace, so students are paying high volumes of fees, universities are competing for students. So I don't think, I can answer for the UK, but I don't think um, that it will ever be default because I, I think there's just not really the, the desire at that senior level to really collaborate and share. And it's mind-blowing to come and hear about what they've done in, in, in Vancouver and, and British Columbia in terms of getting institutions to collaborate. Um, that just, I just don't think that would happen in the UK. Um, but I think certainly within universities, there are, within universities there are pockets of activity where it, it does become default. But... I don't think we're going to see some of the national sweeping changes that we see in other parts of the world just yet, but I think, I think it would be lovely to aspire towards that. Cool. And how do, you, how do you maybe think that we can engage you know, our faculty, upper administration, government, yeah. students, people, yeah. um, to embrace... Do you want to see us at the door? Let's stop and let's yeah. tell them to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're just doing one interview. Um, do you want something? Come in. <laughs> hey. Hi, all right. <laughs> Sorry, no, that kind of burning question. Okay. I, saw, no, I really like your tweet yesterday about the fact that we tend to, you know, obsess about the learning analytics or analyze rather than actually the quality oh, of the tools. Oh, yeah. Tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe, like, yeah. Uh, I thought it might be a good idea to maybe talk a bit about that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, if you think Sorry, it's interrupt. something you guys are done. No, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, do you so want to answer that or do you want to go back to my so question? Just, you got one more question, have you? And then. All okay, right. Well, <laughs> yeah, the one I was just asking, like, um, uh, yeah, so how can we engage, um, you know, more faculty, mm -hmm. our students? Students are getting on board, but the upper administration, yeah. um, governments, yeah. to embrace um, more open education practices. Yeah, that's. That's just the million dollar question, isn't it? I think I have struggled for 10 years with that one. Um, I, th I think it's actually well, one of the presentations yesterday, it might have been Paul Stacey talking about business models of open education. Actually, it's really important to know who the stakeholders are. Um, and I think it was Nicole as well. So to really think, okay, who are the people I'm gonna talk to? Um, and what's their perspective? So you, you just got to find a hook for people, haven't you? And to create an argument um, for your different stakeholders that's going to win them over. And I personally find that really difficult because I just let my enthusiasm come out and suddenly I'm not being very persuasive or, or coherent. So I find that really hard. But I think the conference has been good actually is it's made me think about how can I can create some arguments for myself um, to persuade people at different levels. and. And maybe you're not going to. Maybe maybe you're just not going to be able to be that influential within your organisation. But maybe you start by sort of creating your virtual networks and finding like-minded people in your country and, and draw them together, which is certainly what we do in the UK through our various open education communities. Um, but yes, ever-ending challenge, isn't it? And just when you think you've convinced one person, they leave the university. That's 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 a that's a, quite a common problem, people moving on and career progression. So your arguments lose traction and, and you have to start again. But yes, it's uh, being persistent and keeping going with what you believe, I think, is the way forward. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Over to you. <laughs> Ask your question well, again. Just, uh, yeah, I mean, you see that there's a pattern. I mean, uh, with us at UBC, this obsession about big data and yeah. like, a lot of money thrown into that. Mm. No one really cares about the quality of the of the tools yeah. or, you know, the kind of actual ecosystem that we're running and, yeah. and, yeah. So I just 
thoughts. I mean, I, I loved your tweet yesterday, so I no, think you can comment on that. No, I think it's I th a similar pattern in UK or yeah. generally or. I, th I think the, just saying the UK has gone very um, sort of almost market driven and there's quite a competitive climate between universities and everything's league tables and metrics and what can we measure and you, it, it, it kind of distorts what you're trying to achieve and you know you're, you're strategizing to deliver the metrics that are all nice and shiny and positive but actually losing sight of you know, actually learning and teaching and, and working with students so I think and it's a real danger and uh, attention which is an overused word isn't it but I would also say sometimes that's quite a battle <laughs> it's a battle crowd um, between sort of staff and faculty and, and your senior executive you know you might just have completely different approaches and uh, aspirations.